So if you're thinking about breeding dubia roaches, or maybe you do actually breed dubia roaches now, it can only be better if you have a lot more information about the actual dubia roaches. In this video, I've got 36 different facts about dubia roaches that may help your production increase. But first guys, welcome back to Northern Exotics. We're a reptile YouTube channel that absolutely loves to educate anything to do with reptile. We do an awful lot about how to breed your own live food on various different levels. If that's something you're interested in, please consider subscribing. If you can, hit that notification bell as well and click all on the notifications. That way you'll get notified every time I do upload a new video. Fact number one is to go by a couple of different names. The actual physical scientific name is Blaptica dubia, but they go by other names in different very various countries, they go by different names. Some people call them the orange spotted cockroach. They go by different names. We commonly call them the dubia roach. Number two, they grow between 40 and 45 millimeters. So four and a half centimeters, about the biggest one you're ever gonna get. So they're not gonna get stupidly massive. Number three on the list is they give birth, sort of. They don't lay eggs, sort of. Now, listen here. They get eggs, they get impregnated, they have eggs, they incubate the eggs inside their actual bodies. Every now and then you'll see a little white stub sticking out their bum. That's where they're incubating their egg sac. Um, and they're just sort of airing it out when it's sticking out their bum. Well, what they do is the eggs hatch inside the females and then they come out of the actual female as live bearing babies. It's a bit of random knowledge. There is a specific name for it. If you know the name, stick it in the comment section below. I'm not that smart. Number four is where they come from. If you know where they come from, you might be able to replicate a natural bioactive habitat for them, which might help them produce an awful lot more. I love that sound got the birds kicking around here anyway they come from central and southern america as far down as brazil and places like that number five although they do have wings they can't actually fly the females have got tiny little stubby wings the males have actually got really big wings spanning the entire length of their body it's more like a fashion statement they just don't have the muscle mass inside their bodies to use those wings it's just like clothes for us it's just a fashion statement for them <laughs> i forgot what number six is <clears throat> oh no wait this is number six once they're out the last inset, the very last molt, did you know they can actually live for one to two years, according to Wikipedia? Number eight, did you know they're frugivores? I think that's how you pronounce it, frugivores. Basically, they prefer fruit and grain. That's what they prefer in their diet. However, dubia roaches, given the chance, are pretty much a dustbin and will eat absolutely anything. Fruit and vegetables are the most healthiest option for them. Number nine is they're actually pregnant or carrying eggs, so to speak, for 28 days. It's a nice little pregnancy for them, isn't it? And if you want the best production, it's best to remove those babies out of the colony. That way the female is not concentrating on rearing the babies, but recovering and getting ready for another round of breeding. If you actually want to learn exactly how to breed dubia roaches, then click on this card just up here. That'll take you straight through to a video where you can learn exactly how to uh, breed dubia roaches in detail. Number 10 is exactly how many babies they do have. They can have anywhere from 15 to 40 babies. No wonder in some places they have a massive infestation problem with that many babies kicking around. Consider that they can give birth nine times in their life. That's a lot of babies. Number 11, the babies are called nymphs. Now, I don't know how long they're called nymphs for, but until they start looking about that sort of size, not this, not, not that size, but this size, they're called nymphs as babies. I found it out. Number 12 is nymphs, baby dubia roaches, are nymphs for four to six months. That's when they start getting to the size where they're actually just, we'd commonly call them dubia roaches, and then they go on to being adult dubia roaches. Ah, there's number 12 number 13 is they go through seven instas an insta is basically just another word for malt in the bug world they go through seven malts in their life and the last malt that can last up to 18 months to two years within reason once again i forgot what 14 was so number 15 on the list is they do not bite you can handle them if they do have a bite it doesn't feel like anything you will never feel it the bite is never harmful enough to do any damage whether you're half a year old or 500 years old it just does not hurt it, it 
it's not a bite. It's like when you run your finger over a piece of Velcro sort of thing. They don't chew down on you or anything like that. They're actually, you can handle them and everything like that. It's actually quite fascinating to introduce these sort of animals to children because it's just so fascinating. And it's amazing to see the children getting so enthusiastic about a cockroach. Do you know what I mean? It's fascinating. Number 16 is the males are actually faster than the females. Just a stupid, random little piece of knowledge you might never need to know, but at least you know it now. Number 17 on the list is their exoskeleton. A dubia roach is basically an insect and they have an exoskeleton. Their skeleton is on the outside of their body. Number 18, oh, I haven't got that many fingers so I can't stick them up, but number 18 is they're actually a social creature. They live in massive colonies, so overcrowded isn't really a massive thing to worry about you can have loads in there they're very sociable they have a social life they go out partying and on, on the weekends you know the score they've got loads of different women per male dirty little stop outs number 19 did you know they're pretty much silent the only noise you're ever going to get from a dubia roach is them scurrying between the little bits of cardboard and everything but they actually make no sound whatsoever they don't have little chirps or cries or anything so that makes them an absolutely perfect species and live food for you to breed to be able to go for free live food for your reptiles so if you want to learn how to set up a dubia roach colony from start like the very start then click on this card just up here that'll take you through to a video to show you exactly everything you need to know Number 20 is also a good tip for you, a good little bit of advice if you did want to start breeding your dubia roaches. If you're worried about the smell of the dubia roaches, especially in your house, there's no need to worry. Dubia roaches don't smell when you're breeding them. Number 21 is dubia roaches and all cockroaches are nuclear proof. If we go into a nuclear warfare, they're the only things that are going to actually stand up to it. Rumour has it, remember that Chernobyl um, nuclear explosion thing? Apparently they had a bearded dragon there. Apparently it was fed on dubia roaches. Apparently they're the only thing that survived. Probably. Now I don't know how true number 22 is, but this is a Wikipedia fact. 320 million years ago was when the first one was discovered. Or they can be traced back that far anyway. Things we can do with science and technology these days. Number 23 on the list is in extreme cold, now I'm talking extreme cold, their blood can actually produce a sort of antifreeze type of mixture sort of thing and then it can stop them from freezing up. How fascinating is that? Number 24, and it's quite a disturbing one, something we actually wouldn't think about in the hobby, dubia roaches can actually be eaten and are quite an extremely healthy option, but they can be eaten by humans. They can be cooked up, they're a delicacy in some countries, but they can actually be eaten by humans. Number 25 is their biggest killer. Stick it in the comment section below. Let me know if you know what their biggest killer is. Three, two, you not sorted it yet? Dehydration, believe it or not. They can actually die from dehydration a lot quicker than disease, than any other problem going. Dehydration, so constantly make sure that your dubia roaches, when you are breeding them, are extremely hydrated. They won't give birth to live bearing animals if they don't think that there's not enough moisture source out there to keep the babies hydrated. So make sure you've got enough hydration inside the breeding colony to sustain not only you, but your babies. If you're enjoying this video, remember to hit that thumbs up button. I'd really appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button as well. Just makes me feel good watching those numbers rising. 26 is correctly fed. If you feed your dubia roaches on an extremely healthy diet, they can be the most healthiest stuff, staple diet for your particular reptile. Given the wrong food, obviously you can actually poison your reptiles. So it's very careful that you do get the nutrition absolutely perfect within your dubia roach feeding. Number 27 is quite simple. They are extremely high in calcium. I'd still dust them for your bearded dragon and your savannah monitors and stuff like that. I'd still put calcium on them. But because they've got an extra thick, extra strong exoskeleton, that is only strong because of the extra high level of calcium within their system. Number 28 on the list is dubia roaches have they can vary the fat levels inside their actually their actual bodies. It's a fascinating little thing, but if it's a bit too warm, their fat levels are a lot lower. So if you, you're breeding your dubia colony and you want fat, really fatty sort of gooey dubia roaches, it might be worth turning the temperature down when you're breeding them ever so slightly. So if it's really warm, they're not gonna have a lot of fat. 
if it's a little bit cooler, they have a lot of fat. Now, I would assume, this is just purely assumption, but if they go into like a hibernation state, then they're gonna wanna build up on their fat levels before going into hibernation, and so on and so on, if you get me drift. Plus, if, if it's a bit warmer, we sweat off a lot of our fat, so maybe they do that as well. If you guys have got any knowledge, remember, stick it in the comments, let me know. Number 29 is Dubia roaches have six legs. It gives them perfect opportunity and perfect leniency to be able to scurry between all the different egg crates, especially in the wild. They'll be scurrying between the little slates on the roofs and all that sort of stuff. So number 30, and I think I've already covered this in a previous tip, but they can actually give birth nine times throughout their life. You think about it like this. If they produce 40 babies every time and they produce nine times, if you've got 50 females, that's... Um, Carry the one, 20, uh, a lot. That's a lot of babies. You can actually make this quite profitable with only a small number of female dubia roaches. Number 31 is dubia roaches don't drive. I needed something to fill number 31. So sue me. They can't drive trains, they can't drive, which means they're probably not smart enough to infest your house either. In captivity, one of the biggest killers apart from dehydration is pesticides now people don't actually know this but if you're sat there spraying wasp spray around the house to kill your wasps that can kill your dubia roaches the same goes for deodorant aftershave perfume they can all kill off not only just your dubia roaches but any invertebrates you might have in your collection so it's definitely worth keeping that in the back of your mind when you're getting ready to go on a night out 33 we're on the 33 now did you know dubia roaches are actually illegal in some places i think california has them illegal uh, florida has them illegal stick it in the comment section below if you have dubia roaches illegal where you are i'd love to find out where else is actually illegal to have dubia roaches Number 34, and this is quite a big one, just like in our own human society, the females can be bullies. Please don't hate me. Don't hate me. If you've got too many females and not enough males in your colony, there can be bullying, which will also stop your production. So it's always worth to have five females to one male, and that's a perfect ratio to get the best production. Number 35, I think we're at 35. Yeah, 35. Have you ever seen a white cockroach? Don't worry, it's not an albino cockroach. You haven't got anything special. That's what it looks like, fresh out of malt. Just like a tarantula looks very vibrant after it's malt, it takes about three or four days for your dubia roach to harden up its exoskeleton. Once it's hardened up, it goes jet black as it normally would, and that's when its exoskeleton is hard. While it's in the white stage, it's extremely fragile, so it might be worth to not be throwing it around too much. And finally, number 36, they're actually nocturnal, but in captivity, they can't tell the difference between day and night, simply because it's always dark wherever they're gonna hide. So it's definitely worth thinking about if you want a naturalistic setup to allow for a day and night routine, whether with lights or with less hiding spots. And that right there is 35 random facts about dubia roaches. It took a lot of effort to do this video, so if you can, can you please hit that little button there? That'll take you through to the subscribe page. You can subscribe to the channel. Make sure you click all on the notifications so you get notified next time I do upload a video. If you want to see more videos, click on one of these two here. That one's a, a playlist for breeding various different um, live foods. And that one's just a random video you might enjoy. Peace out.